Tittle and Tittle 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 Well, as you can see, I love watching Cooking with Tittle, and I'm so glad you love watching, too, because we've got a new email address. That's right. It's Tittle in the middle at live, L-I-V-E dot com. So I do hope you will email your Tittle. I've got some great green things going on for this year and some healthy treats. Bon appetit, let's eat each and every Thursday at 7 p.m. and Fridays at 2 p.m. right here on Channel 19. And now, back to the show. Hey. in the middle. Want to have some fun? Welcome to the LaDonna Tittle TV radio show. We have Wow, what nice color. We have my time. We have hurricane. It's good. It's good. These are my big beads. You know, it's, every day is Mardi Gras in Chicago. Paul Prudhomme, God rest his soul, uh, and I met him personally uh, years ago when he was doing a, a taping here in Chicago on, on CBS television. And he just passed a few months ago, uh, but he was a mentor, he was an influence, and I give him props for helping inspire me to continue to cook and to continue to make my dishes the delicacies that they are, and God love him. I mean, he was great. Paul Prudhomme, 75 years ago. He has a great space in New Orleans called K. Paul's Kitchen, and he's left a great legacy for the people, the chefs there to follow. So if you're down in New Orleans, go give him a shot. K. Paul's Kitchen, down in the quarter. Meyer, Meyer, the French Quarter. I love the, the joy of life. Joie de vivre, as we say en français. Joie de vivre, joy of life. And that's what Mardi Gras brings to you. A couple hours later when you burp, it's gonna be the best burp you ever had. You're gonna go like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Wish I had some more. Um, but you see all the wonderful things that go into it and all the prep work um, that's behind it, uh, which takes my effort. But I cook with my love and my passion for doing it, so it's always a great thing. I love it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to making it for the Tittle family. All right, the Tittle viewers. Uh, tittle. Yes, indeed, and to show you guys some real gumbo, okay? This ain't no mess. That's real deal. It's all cool. It's all cool. You all cool. You yeah, indeed. all cool. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, I just want to welcome Mike Thibodeau back to the show. And Mike, you know where we left off at we, last time. We had the bread pudding. We had oh. a little champagne. Now we had, we should have started the other way with this first, but now we're going to do the gumbo. We're going to make a, a I nice... Call it the yummy bread pudding. And it was indeed. It was I appreciate so that. Good. I appreciate so good. that. With the with the lemon sauce. Yes. Yes. And you made it with your friend Jack Daniel. Yes, my dear friend. My <laughs> Salud. Dear friend. Salud. 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 Because you know we had a little argument because uh, he was getting a little too much out of hand. Oh no. Yeah, I had to get I had to get some rum friends. Okay. Oh okay okay. Speaking of rum, you're also going to make this fabulous gumbo. Mm -hmm. And, this and you're going to taste it, too. Yeah, oh, God, I can't yes, wait. Yes, indeed. I can't wait. All right. And you also have the drinks with it. Yeah. We're going to have my Shake, side. shake, shake. We're going to have Hurricane. Shake, shake, shake. And shake. Gumbo. Oh, my gosh. And uh, the first thing, though, I'm going to do is prepare a little side dish. In, in all of us, we talk about lanyap. And lanyap means something extra. L-A-G-N-I-A-P-P-E. So the first thing we're going to do is have something a little extra. I'm going to blacken some scallops 
and we're gonna just sample those and taste those before we start the gumbo. Oh, well, you know what we mm -hmm. like to say. Bon appetit. Let's mm. eat. Let's eat. Let's start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, can yeah. we? Uh, mm. You gotta teach me that French. Juicy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's kind of succulent. Say, 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 no, say, say succulent. Yeah, say uh, succulent. May we with the French part. Yes, I love that word. Yeah. So you are yes. actually a descendant from New Orleans. I got through. Uh, New Orleans. Is I got through. Uh, uh, I'm actually from my great grandmother uh, was a slave mistress in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Uh, to the master Thibodeau, and she had children by him, and one of them happened to be my grandfather. And yeah. my great, uh, my grandfather, who was my dad's father, born in Thibodeau, Louisiana. They then moved to New Orleans, where my dad was born and raised. So we have a, and all the family was there up until Katrina, and then after Katrina, most of them had to leave and go elsewhere to find their, their station in life. So but out of that came me from my dad and his it, my, New Orleans has always been my second home. I would always spend my summers there. I would always spend any time uh, that I could get away. I wanted to go to New Orleans. And from them, I also got my culinary skills by just saying, what you doing there? Who that, why you make that? Who that make that? <laughs> and by doing that and paying attention, I, I learned to love cooking. Uh, but the real story was, of course, that when my mother started working nights, my dad cooked our breakfast the first time and my brother and I looked at each other and we said, we gotta learn how to cook. <laughs> this is not gonna work. That so we both became chefs. So. Oh, that's so great. Oh, um, you know, the history accredited. is great. Yeah, yeah. The history is great. And of course, uh, we're gonna dedicate this show to dad today. To his memory. God bless him. Oh, yes, God bless him. 97 great. years old, he left us, but he left us smiling. He, and he, he called my other brother and he said, I'm ready to come home. <laughs> and that was his way of saying, well, I'm my done. Well, mother, my mother's up there welcoming yeah, yeah. our family. You know, we look like sister and brother. Yeah, indeed. I we, think we, and we might be. We That's might right. be. So. Of course. Do you owe me any money? Oh, no. Oh. Okay. <laughs> No, All my relatives owe me some money. I didn't get that 1.5 oh. B. Oh, okay. I, I swear. <laughs> I played it. I took my little change and tried to play it, and it just didn't work out. So. Well, this is uh, like a dish that uh, people put together as gumbo because they took things from the refrigerator and may not have all the ingredients we have today. Stuff that was left over. It was kind of like just, okay, that's a little, there's some of this left, there's some of that left. Throw it in a pot and let's make a gumbo, and that way they used everything. Well, now we've got a little bit more sophisticated, so now we find all these other ingredients to put in. It makes the gumbo a little bit more expensive, but it sure enough makes it tasty. Well, not to say it wasn't good in the old days, but oh, it's, yeah. it's really good now. Oh, are you kidding? It was may just yeah, brilliant. Yeah. May yeah, may yeah. My, my, my mother used to call the good spaghetti and the rich spaghetti. Yeah. The rich spaghetti had all the ingredients, you know, and the post spaghetti just had the ketchup and the noodles. Okay? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the pasta. I'm yes, indeed. Saying. You had to catch up with it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start this brilliant show. I'm ready. I'm all ready. right. Let's so what, is, what do we do first here? Well, we've already prepped everything. So we've gotten our green peppers, mm -hmm. our onions and our celery, which we call the Trinity, of course, of in course. New Orleans. We've got our green onions, we've got our corn kernels, which is just some extra that I add to the gumbo. It's not an essential ingredient. Uh, fresh garlic, fresh parsley, tomato sauce, and a chicken stock. Um, one of the other things I wanted to add is there's no okra on the table. Yeah. Okra is not an essential component of gumbo, but and since I was allergic to okra, I develop my gumbo without using it. If a, if someone wants okra, then of course I'll get it and saute it and put it in the gumbo. I'm and an okra problem. girl. Well, yeah, but it, it, for me, it's just. In fact, I was told that that gumbo meant okra. No, it doesn't. It, it, gumbo actually came from so many different cultures, and each different culture put something into it. Okay. The African American culture actually started putting the okra into the gumbo. Okay. But originally, it's still in the in the Cajun Bayou. There wasn't any okra as part of a staple within the, the dish, but it's still okay. It's still it fine. is perfectly yeah. okay because um, you gonna love this. I guarantee. <laughs> I guarantee. As Justin used to say, we won't. We won't even discuss my friend who did some uh, gumbo, and he says gumbo is not gumbo without okra. Well, yeah, <laughs> we had that discussion before. Too. Yeah, I'm saying it again. All right, this this is some gumbo. I, I believe I am so glad to have you, and I love the bowls. Where did you find the bowls? In New Orleans, of course, of course. Oh, I love it. And as it's described on the bowl, the first thing we're going to do is first you make a roux. Now that's the kind of instructions you can't go wrong. Yeah, with. yeah. First you make a roux. First you make a roux. First you make a roux. Because <laughs> yeah. I was going like. What's our first step, Thibodeau? There it is. There it is. 
first. It's laid out for you, so you can't miss it. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh my goodness. You can make a roux many ways. Uh, traditionally, it's with flour and butter or flour and oil. And you can use basically any oil that suits your taste. I specifically, particularly like to use a vegetable oil. Oh, and I have over here the two ingredients that are essential, which is my flour and my oil. And I'm going to now heat this oil to a temperature. I'm going to then cook this uh, flour within that oil to make my roux. And my roux is going to go from a blonde color initially to all the way to a very dark chocolatey roux, which is the specialty that I make. And I'm going to do this in a short period of time. So I have some things that I have to set for me to use immediately. You know, I'm your sous chef. I know you're okay. not used you're to gonna, my help. You know what? You're gonna hand me these. Oh great! Okay. I get to I get to help. Okay, you're gonna you gonna get, get to help. I get to help. Oh, I get to help. I'm so glad I get to help. Wow, that is so good. Well, and it's hot. And, and I'm ambidextrous, so that's why I can do two hands. But this is a constant process that I will be doing for the next five minutes. And if you don't want to watch me do this, unless if you don't find it interesting enough, okay. But what you will see is the gradual transition of this roux. What you're looking at right now is what's called a blonde roux, okay? And that's because it's kind of a light brown. But it's going to gradually change as I'm cooking it. How into a caramel so colored roux and then it'll be a red a brown roux then a red brown roux and finally my chocolate wow oh yeah gumbo yeah yeah as you can see the smoke flying off of this it's gonna be my chocolate and then you're gonna get ready with your ingredients to hand me. Oh, okay, I'm ready, sure. Because I also have to make sure that I don't scorch anything in the interim. And I got the peppers, I've got the celery, and I've got the onions. All right, here's my chocolate roux. There it is, and what time is it? Mm -mm -mm. 146. You did good, you did it under six yeah. minutes. Okay, give me vegetables, please. Vegetables. Thank you. This goes in, next, next. Here you go, celery. celery. Go ahead, pour it in there. Pour it in there. Thank you. Thank you. Next, onion. Onion. Pour it in there. Yes. All yes. of them. Yes. All right. And constantly stirring this so that I don't burn anything. Now I want uh, garlic, please. Garlic. Garlic. Pour it in. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, does this look good. Oh, you got to get all of it, yeah. Thank you. Okay. My mother loves you for that. <laughs> oh. Now we'll do this until the the gum the bubbling subsides. And it's smoking. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's smoking. Check it. my stock, see if it's uh warm enough. Boiling? Yet. If it's got any bubbles in it, the stock. Okay. Watch this. Yep, it's smoking. The stock is smoking, no okay. bubbles yet. Okay. That's some work there, Chef. Yeah, it gives you good wrist strength. You're not kidding. I think and this I'm is hot. Kidding. This is really hot. It is very hot. Okay. Right, it's starting to cool. came off so good. This roux is dissolving and I'm mixing it and I'm just burning off hopefully any additional flour taste in me there. There may any flowery taste in it. But what you can also see is there's a nice little thickness to that stock now. Oh you man, I okay. see. I'm just making sure that the, the burning off some of the flour and also keeping it from sticking to the bottom of the pan and burning so we don't want to have that. And then stirring doesn't do the job. You just basically have to kind of shift it around and let it rotate. Okay? Oh my God. You Back get, and forth. You get fancy with it too. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. Uh -huh. 
Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. All right. Now I'm getting ready to do the meats that are gonna go into the gumbo. And I'm gonna start with my andouille sausage. Okay. And I'm gonna add that to my skillet. Okay. And I'm, a, I'm very meticulous. I just. I see. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. A lot of people just throw sausages into the pot, but I think you lose something in the texture. And so therefore, I saute mine briefly before I throw them in the pot. And not only that, it releases the juices and the flavors, and you'll see what happens with them in a minute. Oh, okay? okay. Next will be the chicken. <laughs> You're doing it. <laughs> oh. Okay. A little Worcestershire sauce. Ah, flavor. Just a little lanyard. A little lanyard, okay. A little lanyard. Okay. Scrape whatever that is in there. I don't want it to okay. splat up in my face. That's the reason why I'm holding it like this. You're doing good. Okay. And you still got your balls on, too. I still got my balls. I mean. Now, Chef, bring me my scampi butter. This is the butter that I've put together, which is uh, fresh parsley and garlic and then just mixed into the butter. You know, fancy chefs, they'll sculpt it into something like a bird or something, but I don't have that kind of skill, so you just get this in a dish, okay? Before I eat up all the shrimp. Get out of there. <laughs> got eyes in back of your head. <laughs> and now what I want you to do in a minute is just add the shrimp into this melted butter. Okay. That's cool. I'm so glad I didn't miss the pot. Yeah. Okay. They almost went on the back of the stove. <laughs> okay. I love this cool. cool. Now we'll let this saute. Take this stick of butter and put it in that pot. Thank you. I get the oh, oh, I'm sorry. Not this one. This pot. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. That's all right, minor problem. Minor glitch. We got it, we got it. That's Wait, why I was moving on. this way, and you were moving me. I was going like, wish. Yeah, now we're good. Now, That's just let it melt. Just Two cooks in the kitchen are never good. <laughs> it's all right, we got this. But this is a TV show. So we got this. We have, we can, we can do that. Parsley, I love to sprinkle. I get to stir. Yes, indeed. Wonderful. Um, okay. I just add a little corn to it, just to give it another little texture, another little color, another little taste. That's all. The so butter, the parsley, the, the corn. Oh my God, this looks so and wonderful. These crab legs are looking so good. Thank you. Notice these two packages. These are the, the only kinds of ingredients that I use of this sort, the crawfish, and the andouille sausage. But notice the name on this sausage, Thibodeau's. <laughs> notice the name on the crawfish, Boudreaux. All right, the, these I use. I have this flown in for me whenever I'm gonna make orders of gumbo because what? it's essential, I like it. Flown I like in it. from where? From Louisiana. Oh, okay, Louisiana. Um, so, so the reason why I also bring this up because back in history, and they still do it, there's these famous jokes that go around in Louisiana humor called Thibodeau and Boudreaux. Oh. And it's always like Thibodeau did this and Boudreaux did that. So, and, and they, they're all part of the Cajun humor. And I'll give you a quick example. So Boudreaux always thinks he's so smart. So he went up to Thibodeau and he said, hey Thibodeau, how many seconds in a year? And Thibodeau thought about it for a minute. He said, 12. Boudreaux looked at him and said, what? What you talking about? Where you coming up with something like 12? How you get something like that? Thibodeau said, well, there's January 2nd, February 2nd. March 2nd, you get it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we're using this. We're only using the best stuff, okay? What's crawfish if you don't have to bite the heads off? Oh, well, you're kidding. You got yeah. crawfish that you don't have to bite the heads off? Yeah, it's just the meat. They've already, that's why I buy, get this Boudreaux stuff. Can I taste one? No, onion. Uh, you part my fingers? I sure will part your finger. You're the chef. Ooh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. You gotta order me a bag of that. Okay. Without the crawfish, without the shell. Yeah, yeah, it's just the meat. Okay. What okay. people don't realize is salt is used as a preservative on crab legs, and if you don't soak them, then you'll get that salty taste. Is so you want to get that out of here, yeah. Okay, all right. 
Don't, don't, let, don't let me chop. Don't, don't, don't let me chop. Let chop yet. Okay, let me chop that hand off. All right, there you go. There you go. You want to chop this one up? I should have. No, no. Gets a big crab no, 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 because they're getting big crazy. Look at the size of that leg. All oh, that's meat, okay? All right, now, we're uh, done with that. Oh, my God. Oh, this is great. All right, shrimp is ready. Ah, uh, let's see, this little crab leg. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more. Mm. Oh, some more crab leg? No, so get that submerged in that water. I want to get that salt Oh, more water. There. Chef. I'm, I'm just going to put some more butter in that. Now. Yeah, more butter. Butter is good. I love butter. I'm a butter nut. Yeah, there you go. All right. Back to the crab leg. She is enjoying herself. You know, I guess I have to bring the extra crab leg next time. Mmm. It's so crab. All right, now, final touches here. Coming up. I did the crab leg. That's right. <laughs> now I'm going to take the shrimp, finish with them, and let's get them into the gumbo, along with that, that butter that I sauteed them in. Oh, yeah, you put extra butter in. Yeah, yeah. All of the Trinity. Yes, indeed. And what a nice pot. Pot of love. Yeah, indeed. All right, that's good. This is what I do when I do chitlins. And see, I <laughs> use this as my workout. See, you can take this. Just get it up. Pick that up. Pick that up. Pick it up. Yeah, yeah. I can see. Let me see. see. Oh. I was doing my curls with it. A good exercise. That's what I say. You can get your oh. work out with it. I'd rather clean the counter. <laughs> oh, goodness, is this hot? Yeah. Oh man, yeah. this is so good. She cleaned it out. Look at that. <laughs> wow. I did, didn't I? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> we are about to reach the denouement, right? which is the next to the last. Now, point. what do I do with this? Just strip, pour them through this strainer. Oh, okay. No, that's the last thing we'll do for this pot. Oh, wonderful. Now, now this will simmer. Wow, what luxury. I did clean it out. Would you like to see what it looks like right now? Hmm? Oh, that's a, uh oh, I left a little piece of meat. No, I cleaned it out. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Rosette, you are a charm, girl. It's two to one in the middle. Our gumbo is here. This is yes. the best snowman I've ever made, and I will be sitting here watching to make sure none of the neighbors come to try to take it. And you know away. what? It's not even the neighbors. It's the squirrels and the rabbits. Oh, they, listen. This is not Mississippi. We don't want rabbit or squirrels, do. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks okay. good. It smells delicious. See you later. The gumbo is cooling in the snow. We are multitasking and using nature. Yummy. Oh. Girl, I love you watching that gumbo, baby. It's a gumbo facial. <laughs> <laughs> I see you still there, girl. How long has it been? About 30 minutes? <laughs> yes. My God. 30 minutes and counting. And the gumbo is keeping me warm. And the hurricane. And the hurricane. We got a mind tie for you that. right now. <laughs> All right, girlfriend. All right. I think I just did. Oh, that's cute. Oh. What? Well, while we're waiting for that 45 minutes, you know what we can do, don't you? Cocktails? Cocktails. Okay, let's, go, let's go to the bar. Hurricanes. Let's go to the time. bar. Yes, indeed. Let's put the bar on the table. It's that time. Let's bring the bar to us. Okay. Oh, look at this fresh paint. For the hurricanes. Yes, that's going to be our garnishment. Mm -hmm. But we're going to use the passion fruit syrup. Okay. We're going to use the clear rum. We're going to use the dark rum. Okay. We're going to add a splash of 
Chambord. Oh yes, let me get the Chambord. Yes, indeed. Wow. Okay. Bingo. So there we have. That's the pineapple cutting lesson for today. I'm telling you. I think it's most important. I get on these drinks chunk. by all means. Rosette did the cherries so good, and then she say, "Ooh." He's some slippery little hoes. You know, he can't get them on the toothpick. Okay. I love it. <laughs> but I did it. I got the little hole on the toothpick right away. <laughs> well, that, that was my cue. I thought go beep. Here you want the cherry? I'm good. Mm. Holes are good, ain't Slippery it? little. Oh, it's slippery hoes. <laughs> Let's see if I can get one. Mm. Oh, I got it again. Obviously, I'm pretty good at home. <laughs> <laughs> the cherry. <laughs> okay. May yeah, may oh, yeah. These cherries are good. Yeah, yeah, they are. They you are. You get good. some good stuff. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your mind time. Shake your mind time. Boy, shake your hurricane. Oh. Shake your hurricane. And I haven't had one yet. All right, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Okay. We made it right to the table. Wait just a minute. Oh, it's got to be garnished. And then taste it and savor it. Yes. The hurricane. Oh my God. Delicious. Oh, you said you were gonna this show up. Yes, indeed. Good. Well, wait, all right, I, I gotta, I gotta, let me do another one. Yeah, do another one so I can share. I hate to drink alone, but anyway. All right, well, while you drink, let me, uh, do this mm. again. Oh, wait a minute, the sous chef got to help me. Well, I said while you drink, just go ahead and drink. Uh, mm. <laughs> All right, be some good ass hurricanes. Ta-da! And we got another one coming. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's oh, good. Oh, that's delicious. So mm. good. That's so good. Welcome to Chicago. Yeah, indeed. Hey. Yeah, indeed. Welcome to yeah. Chicago, New Orleans. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> New Orleans is in Chicago. Right. What you doing stepping back on it? You think you stepped curry? Because I had to look. He's I had to carry his food and I'm I still, right as much fun as I'm having, I got to keep an eye on things. That's right, the gumbo. Okay. So I've uh, been cooling for a while, so let's. This is so, so good. <laughs> you got gumbo. You've been, she you're cheating. Face. You're eating. <laughs> She's out there eating. Never mind the squirrels. Shame, I know why you wanted to watch it now. Oh my God, it's so safe and so good. Oh, wonderful. Oh man, this I love is, how safe it is truly an experience. And uh, thank you, Rosette. As you know, with gumbo, of course, we need rice. That gumbo is missing. Uh, you know. <laughs> yes. And I've got the rice with some fresh parsley and some Creole seasoning in it. So uh, we're going to be ready to take care of that. In another minute, as soon as we finish the Mai Tais. Yes, I'm gonna add some mint okay. to my shaker. So we're gonna do one part rum, two parts of the Mai Tai mix. Oh, one. Oh, okay, you do it in the shaker. <laughs> De little two. Two. My little, what's that word? Lanyap, lanyap. Lanyap. And I just threw a little light in there, a little extra. Okay, lanyap. Lanyap. Fast lanyap. version of shake, 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 shake. Shake your booty, <laughs> shake your herd, shake your mai tai, shake, shake your mai tai. Shake your gumbo. All right, now. Gumbo, gumbo, gumbo. About a nice little piece of mint. Oh, I grew mint. Oh, Doesn't that look beautiful? That looks Thank great. You so okay, much. my pleasure. Avec okay. de plaisir. Mmm. That's your Mai Tai. Oh, oh man, that's good. Oh my God, is that good? On a petite. Let's eat. You're cooking with Tittle and my friend Mike Thibodeau. Oh, these drinks are great. Look, oh my God, it slid right out. Mmm. Mmm. And the meat is so fresh. Mmm. Mmm. This is good. Well, folks, it's been a journey and a good tasting. This is why we're here. Oh. And you said you was going to mess us up with mm -hmm. that. Of course, you used another word. I, yeah, I used the French word. Fun. Fun. The F word. Yeah. <laughs>